The Real Deal. What's up, guys? It's Jake from The Real Deal Airsoft. Welcome back to episode 3 of the Upgrade series. If you didn't see episode 2, where I switched all my batteries over to Dean's, make sure to check that out. In this episode, we're going to be dropping in some SHS 13 to 1 ratio gears, and also we're going to be shimming them. Shims provided by SHS. Shimming is one of the most confusing parts about airsoft, but hopefully I'll be able to break it down and make it easy for you. To explain the concept of shimming, I threw the gears into the gearbox with no shims. As you can see, there's a lot of vertical play. The whole concept of shimming is placing little metal discs that vary in thickness to decrease this movement as much as possible. Uh, we have to find the fine line of not being too tight and not being too loose. We also want to shim for the best surface contact between the gear teeth. We don't want the gears too close together that they grind on each other, and we don't want the teeth too far apart from each other that there's not good surface area. That's how teeth break. So it's all about finding that sweet spot. All right, real dealers, let's get it popping now. You finna learn today. You wanna decompress your tappet spring, and this will allow you to take out your whole compression system. I wanted to go ahead and test the stock AEG's compression. Uh, we are losing a little bit of air near the top of the cylinder head. Uh, I'll definitely fix that later. If it was a perfect air seal, it would be really hard to push this piston. But as you can see, it goes forward. The seal is definitely not perfect. I'll show you how to fix this later. I was happy to see a polymer cylinder head. The reason being is because if you have a polymer piston head and a polymer cylinder head, or a metal piston head and a metal, metal cylinder head, then that can cause stress and cracking. Um, the metal to polymer with the padding absorbs a lot of the shock. The stock gears are strong, but the shimming is what it is from a factory. It's not good. It also has a self-shimming column on the spur gear, which I don't like at all. Um, so we're going to remove everything, and once we drop the new gears in, we'll get to upgrading. On this VFC MP5, we are putting in a Gate Aster optical mop set, so you don't need any of your trigger contacts, your trigger shuttle, and you don't even need the cutoff lever. The only thing we're going to be reusing is the trigger, trigger spring, and the safety bar for the selector plate. This little spring goes over your safety bar and it sits in this orientation. Get those booty contacts out of here. Optical mop set, baby. The only issue with a traditional trigger shuttle is that when you pull the trigger, you're closing an electrical circuit and electricity is arcing from your trigger contact into the trigger shuttle completing the circuit. So eventually you're gonna burn out these contacts. That's why an optical mop set is the best upgrade. The first gear I like to shim is the spur gear. Shim the bottom of the gear first. The goal is to have this free spinning and not scraping on the gearbox. Simply place a shim starting with the thinnest one you have and add until it's free spinning. Simply place a shim and spin the gearbox while it's open. We will do this step for each gear individually. Then once they are all shimmed individually, we will do them together. Luckily just a 0.2 and a 0.1 shim was more than enough to get this free spinning. Once we're finished with the bottom, go ahead to the top. I'd say there was a couple millimeters of movement and it's a little bit more than I want, so I'm gonna add another small shim. And as you add shims, make sure to write it down on a piece of paper how many you have on the bottom and how many you have on the top. Because whenever you work on the gearbox, the shims usually jump around. So once you know, you'll know. Originally I had a two millimeter shim on here and I'm going ahead and putting on a one millimeter shim. Again, the increment is small and I'm gonna put it on and see how it feels. Uh, there was a little bit too much to play, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw a two millimeter shim on that bitch. <laughs> And this seems to be about the correct axial movement that I'm looking for. We're gonna put the screws in the gearbox, tighten everything down, and check the alignment one more time. We're gonna repeat this process for all three of the gears, and then we're gonna come back and shim them together. You heard. And guys, if you feel like you're learning something from the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It helps me a lot, and we're having a giveaway of 500 subscribers, so be on the lookout. And keep in mind, you're supposed to shim the bottom of the gear first with the gearbox open. I didn't show because it's pretty simple. Uh, you just place a couple shims, spin the gear, and make sure it's free spinning and not touching anything. 
This gear still has a lot of movement, so I'm gonna go ahead and add another shim. And in this case, it's a third 0.3. And I recommend to put some screws in the gearbox because that gives you an, a real accurate idea of how tight the gears really are. Still too much movement, so I'm gonna throw another 0.3 shim on there. That's four total. And guys, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit, but we're gonna be doing the same philosophy throughout the whole thing. With the sector gear, if it's shimmed perfectly, when you spin it, it should make five, six rotations and then start slowing down. If it starts slowing down before that, it's too tight and you should remove a shim. I'm pretty confident this is shimmed perfectly and let's spin it and hear how it sounds. That's good. On this MP5 build, my shimming process is a little bit different. Once I'm done with all the gears, next I'll take my motor and the pistol grip and adjust uh, the height of the motor to get the best angle of engagement between the pinion gear and the bevel gear. In this case, I'm just going to have to adjust the height based off of sound and I'm going to be going for more of a popping sound compared to a winding sound once the gun is put all back together. Uh, the pistol grip is part of the lower receiver on this build. All right guys, you've made it to this point, the majority of the hard work is out of the way. Close the gearbox and spin the gears. See if they spin freely and make five to six rotations. If they feel tight, look to see which gear has the least axial movement and remove the smallest shim off that gear. Close it back up and test again. We just wanna make sure that all the gears are spinning freely and nothing's as tight or getting caught up. And that just about wraps it up for episode 3 on how to shim the gears for a V2 gearbox for this VFC MP5 build. In a separate video I'll show you exactly how to fine tune the sector gear to the piston. Be on the lookout for episode 4, we're going to be dropping the Gate Aster MOF set into this bad boy and we're going to be playing around with some of the programming settings. Until next time, see you on the field. The real deal.